catch. Okay, I enjoy being a freelance journalist. When I and there's there is a difference, big difference, of course. The big difference is you are isolated. You're not in a newsroom, which there's nothing better than working in a newsroom. There actually was nothing better than working in a newsroom that was filled with cigarette smoke and people drinking coffee. But that's and, and everybody yelling and the police the police scanner blaring. That's the best environment. But that's that's a long time ago. Uh, but the the fact that I'm not in a newsroom after 34 years in a newsroom is hard. Uh, I, my office is down down in my basement. I mean, I have two windows. It's not, it's not like I'm ice, like I'm in the darkness there. And usually my cat sits with me in the window, so he's my he's my newsroom. So that's that's a harder thing, the, to be alone. The sense of being being isolated. Um, the but there are so many other things that are good about it, and that I, uh, the only boss I report to, is me. Um, that uh, that uh, if that I make my own decisions. I've always been good about decision making anyway, but I make my own decisions for my own life. And I don't have some, the only jerk that's a boss is me. And if, if I have a disagreement with me, that happens. And I have problems and I go walk, go for a walk. So that's, that, it's, 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 it's a harder life than having the stories assigned to you and having the benefits applied, you know, handed to you. Uh, but it's, it's actually can be very rewarding. And I have to, there are hard things like paying for your own health care. Uh, which don't get me started on healthcare. Uh, probably I don't have the politically correct viewpoint here. Um, so, but uh, there are all kinds of hard things that you have to do, and I, and I provide sole support for my family um, because my wife we, we elected when we adopted children overseas that they had special they had special challenges, and so she was a journalist also. She stayed home with the ch children. She still does a lot of volunteer volunteer work now that they've gotten older. So basically, I have to keep something working all the time. I work seven days a week. I don't rest very well. That's all. Those are those are drawbacks. Um, the fact that uh, the fact that I work for myself, though, I mean, there are all, there are good things about that too. Um, there, the every day you face a challenge trying to sell yourself again to somebody to do it, take a story from you. So that's 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 a challenge. Um, I, I when I first I have to be honest when I first left the newspaper, got my buyout. I did, I thought of both things. I started freelance writing, but I also started putting in applications at different, uh, where they like had information agencies like at Vanderbilt or you know, United Methodist Communication or any places, I can't remember which. I applied to a lot of people, probably for about 50 applications, resumes went out that first year, the universities and things. I didn't want to do PR, but they're, you know, working in their news services. And uh, then I, I, I didn't get any it didn't, it didn't get any nibbles, and I realized that, the, that, I, that I wasn't going to, that I was the wrong age, um, and I had other, you know, the, the, there are other things that, 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 that too much experience, they weren't going to offer you a, a job, um, whatever reason, there are other reasons too, that other, other people are, are, are offered jobs when, but when, when people like me aren't. It's not, a, it's just a thing, o older people in general aren't, that's the way to say it. When older people in general aren't, aren't, aren't offered jobs it, uh, because of their experience, and I was told that I had too much experience and that I ought to dumb down my resume. And I, and I refused to do that. And so, so um, I uh, didn't get jobs. But in the meantime, I was developing my freelance business. I got to a crossroads though, where it was either this is after my buyout ran out, because the buyout gave me a cushion, and either I needed to go ahead and throw myself full time into freelance work, or really get one of these full time jobs. I couldn't try to get full time jobs and do freelance. And that time that I was spending looking for full time jobs was not was was, was lost time, and so I decided I was no longer working looking for full time work. That I'd just be a full time freelancer and I'd try it and see what happened. And I was fortunate that it has. I mean, I'm not rich. Uh, I drive a, almost a 30-year-old car, um, but uh, I'm, I'm able to do pretty much what I, uh, what I enjoy doing, which is telling stories of people. I do cover some news still now. I work for Reuters News Agency, so every day I check in with them seven days a week and s tell them what's going on in Tennessee. I cover Tennessee. They choose a story if they want one. Uh, so I'll have 
two, maybe three stories a week for them. But I file a seven-day report. Uh, so I have them. I have the Lipscomb work, or my steady. This is my steady work. Then, but I, but I write for a lot of other. Uh, I write for the Nashville Ledger a lot. I write for um, different country music publications a fair amount, and uh, then I also write completely non-paying stuff for myself. But all my time is spent working for myself, with eventual goal, you know, to provide for my family. It's scary. It's a tightrope because um, you wonder. But then, if I was still in a full-time job at a newspaper, I'd be more frightened because I'd see everybody else getting fired and laid off in front of me. So it's better to be where I am in a position where I know that, that I can, I've, 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 I've gained, I'm not completely self-confident, but I know I have a certain amount of resilience that I've proved it to, it's proved it to myself, resiliency I guess it is, so that I can keep on finding new work to do. So that's pretty much the now working for a daily newspaper. Uh, you know, that the, the was great and it was fun for, for the good first 20 years of my career. And, and, and you know, they're, they're, you, there's no matching that. I'd, I'd go back to that today. I mean, I'd do that. I'd give up freelance life to do that. I wouldn't give up freelance life to be in the da daily media now. Somebody give me a small town newspaper to run and I'll go do that. But uh, as is, is Ben, I, I worked my, I don't think I mentioned this too enough. I really, really, because I worked a lot coaching young people when I was a full-time journalist. I mean, I'm a full-time journalist now. I was a newspaper journalist. Um, I was a training guy a lot. Spent time with young people. I really like young people. Um, I like being around young people. So that's why when I first got out of full-time work, I went to the universities here in Nashville. And uh, I'd already known Professor McCollum here, Dr. McCollum here, but there was not a job here at that time. Um, but so I came and I was looking for work in, in, the, in, the, in at least part time in academia. I went to, I did become, I started advising the Vanderbilt paper and did the one year there. And I, now I'm doing this stuff here with a, when that, now that job was created for me and it was a, one, a nine month contract and separated on good terms. Uh, I just ran out. Um, I kind of worked my way in there though, just kind of by volunteering to help at first. And they paid me to do it. But, um, now I, I, I work now with students here at Lipscomb a little bit, not as much as I'd probably like to, but a little bit. And that's some of the most rewarding things, some of the most rewarding aspects of what I'm doing now. Um, in fact, it's, uh, it's not as 